Welcome back to Zion Made. Today we have a special guest who happens to be staying at Zion Y Bison. They're a family of four that travel and they all live in an RV, homeschool, do everything remotely from there. So I'm super excited and I'm super stoked to go take a tour and to potentially take them on a hike. And I'm excited to bring you guys with us. So let's go head down there and introduce them to you guys. Guys, this RV, is like worth two million dollars and if you guys haven't checked out their channel yet they talk about where they potentially got broken in or robbed or something like that so we're gonna find out all of the ins and outs on how they do it how they got there how they make it work so let's go check it out dude this is nice though like holy cow look at how big this is <laughs> Holy cow. And they even got like LED strips going across. Can't wait to get a tour of this place. Let's see if anyone's home. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you guys? Great. I didn't think anyone was going to be here. So to our surprise, <laughs> they're home. Hello. Hey, you doing? I'm Jason. Jason, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. That's got a solid handshake. Bridger. Bridger, nice to meet you. I don't know who's in your I'm Trent. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Awesome. I'm Linda. Linda, nice to meet you, Linda. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Sarah. Hi. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. Sarah. How's it going, Jason? Jason, nice to meet you, nice Jason. To meet you. Hi, Jason. Would you tell us a little bit more about your motorhome? Yeah, home absolutely. In so this is a 2008 Prevo H model, and we have been on the road traveling full time for eight years now. So we were able to buy this bus as a shell. There was nothing inside of it. It was just completely gutted. gutted. So when we went through the bus, and you'll get to see inside, we got to pick everything. We got to pick the colors, the awnings, the wheel colors. I can't wait for you to see the inside. I'm excited to see the inside. I'm sure they're excited to see the inside. Let's do it. Let's do it. You can go, you can go with mama. All right, yeah. she's going to teach me everything about it. full time, we needed to have a really good kitchen. Uh, we have a four burner induction eye tucked under oh, here, nice. which is great because most of them just have two, but yeah. like we had spaghetti for lunch before you got here, you know, it's like normal life. Uh, but this is how we pull it off. This is an oven slash microwave. We have a dishwasher, oh. hallelujah. We just ran it, so it's probably a little That bit. is so cool. But yeah. So this is really cool. We have uh, this epoxy table. And so this was a live edge piece of wood. Uh, the guys at the shop cut it in half, flipped it, and then this is the live edge and filled it with epoxy. So this is really cool because it slides in and out. So on a travel day, it has to go all the way in, but you know, to get in and out, it's really comfortable. It also comes up and down. So yeah, I can raise it and use this as a standing desk and work. So even though we have such a small space, it converts, right? So this is living room, kitchen, and now we are yep. heading towards... This is where, you know, the, the bunks start. This is what you want to see. This is where the kids sleep. So it looks like it's tiny when you come around the corner, but their feet go all the way to the end of this wall. So take a peek at it. Oh, yeah. Of course, they, uh, they, they put some of their backpacks and stuff in there. So yeah, so during the day they do bring their backpacks and they stick them back there and it keeps everything tidied up. And then at night they just put their backpacks out there on the on the bench. They have lived over half of their lives in a bunk bed. That's crazy. In an RV. Of some and they sort. like it. They love it. Love it. They love beg it. us to never stop. So we separated the kids' bedroom from our bedroom <laughs> with the bathroom. So here is our shower. Set you up. can step in there if you want. Uh, what was really cool when we built this is the company that did Whoa. our conversion. Yeah, there's hey, tons of room. Hey, what are you room. doing? I'm showering <laughs> in there's here. There's tons of room in there. <laughs> the people that do our bus do van buses. So a major country singer's bus was being renovated or converted. Sorry. And so I got to step into like a superstar shower. They're like, step in such and such a shower and see if it's big enough. I'm like, I think if it works for him, it's probably gonna work yeah. for me. One of the things we knew was gonna work was for our bed to be opposite, like to come off the back you were wall. you gonna have it this way? Yeah, we were gonna have the headboard back there. Well, right. when we walked in here and that piece of plywood was laying the opposite direction, it just didn't work. No. And so we immediately flipped it and started, you know, configuring the room this way. I have a master closet back here. 
uh, we have a washer and dryer tucked in here. So cool. So I mean, like, it's it's a real house. We're it all really self-contained. We don't have to go anywhere and do anything it has else. Everything. These are um, they're air, they're on an air compressor, so they all open and close. It's like the Matrix. So you can't open it or you can on this side too. Yeah, yeah. Right here, this is door two. Say, and you can do door one. You put your kids inside mount. Yeah. Lock them in there. So, you're stuck. <laughs> there is a manual override and we have had to use it. Just once, but we have had to use it. <laughs> here, this, I got the force. Ready? Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's behind door number one? How's it going? <laughs> Jason and Sarah. Okay, so Jason and Sarah, I have a couple questions for you guys. Um, I guess the first one was is before you guys were in a camper, what was you know like what was life like growing up for you guys? Yeah, so we've been traveling for over eight years. So she was six and I was eight when we left. Life before we started traveling um, is actually a lot like it is in the motorhome. We homeschooled and. We just did day-to-day -day life. The only thing that changed was we no longer lived in a permanent house. We lived in a house that moved whenever we wanted it to. So we weren't in a school system already, so it wasn't like having to be pulled out of that. We could just pack up everything and go. You guys have probably been to so many places, seen so many views. Do you guys have like a... A favorite? Yeah, I know it's probably super tricky to it pick is. from. Yeah. Each place is different and beautiful in its own way, but... Three out of the last six winters we spent in Breckenridge, Colorado skiing. It's at like 10,000 feet, it's two hours from Denver, and we have some great memories there. And we love so many places, but that place, it, it almost feels like a home away from home. Um, and we, we did some awesome things there. We could leave our house and be on the mountain in 15 minutes. Holy cow. So do you both ski, yeah. snowboard? Yeah. The ski. whole family. The whole family does? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, because your parents aren't here, who's the best one? Him. Honestly, I am the best skier. I'm second, and then my dad, and then my mom. So what is like a typical day waking up from morning to night? What does that look like for you guys? It all depends where we are. And so <clears throat> like if it's a travel day versus when we're staying still and where we are, it literally just depends where we are. Some days it's more like everybody gets their work and school done, like we stay inside, and then we might go do something like later in the day once everything's done. Or it could be like, okay, uh, my parents, they're gonna not do work today. We get off school and we go adventure for the whole day. We'll go do a hike that we need to get there early. Then we might go do a picnic like near a river and go swimming. Like it literally depends where we are. The biggest thing I always tell everybody is we try to live, like we try to be in charge of our schedules, like plan out a calendar or whatever for the day. But the thing with our life is there is no amount of planning you can do that something will not change. It doesn't matter when you wake up. It doesn't matter when you go to bed. It doesn't matter what you have planned for this hour in your day or what you have planned for this 30 minutes in your day. Something can change and 95% of the time something will change. And so like from a wake up to go to bed routine, there is no routine. It is a lot of the times it is like live life by the moment sort of thing. Um, you know, the weather clears up and it's like, oh, hey, I found this hike. Let's go do it. Well, I plan to do school for these two hours. Well, we'll just do school when we get home. We'll do two hours of school over the weekend. You know, it's just, it's stuff like that. It's being very That's adaptive. Awesome. Our life is, in one word, is what I would have to say is being adaptive. That makes sense, adaptive yeah. and flexible. On a scale of one through 10, how much do you guys love your life? Uh, probably like a 5,000 <laughs> Like it might be higher than that. I was gonna say something like 11 or 12. Yeah. 11 or 12. And then on a scale of one through 10, how much do you guys love your parents? Solid three. No, I'm just kidding. Like a, I'm just kidding. Like a, 11 like a, or 12. Like a 10.1 there. Okay, they get above the scale. Yeah. Our parents are truly the best parents in the world. Yeah. That's what, all I gotta say. Here, here's the bottom line. We were we were working our butts off for what we thought was the American dream. And we were chasing something that was not fulfilling our family. And at the time, you know, the kids were five and seven. Um, as Linda said, we had a, a chain of events that happened professionally and it caused us just to pause. And here's what I realized during that time of my life, I was working my butt off and Linda was working her butt off and parenting and doing all the things that went with it. And I would come home and fall asleep in the chair while they had dinner. 
and you know the kid's like dad dad let's go outside and play and i'm like no and, and you know literally i was just exhausted and uh, i woke up one day and i realized i had one shot to be a great husband and one shot to be a great dad and if i got that wrong the rest of it just didn't matter and from that day forward like our life started changing it just started growing and growing bigger and you know we just have the most awesomest life ever and uh we just made a decision that we were going to live our life first and it's not perfect and it's not roses and we have arguments and we do all those things but at the end of the day the relationship that we have it's pretty obvious to anybody that's paying attention it's authentic and we are crushing life you know on the front of our bus we have this magna shade and and at first we said you know we really want to focus on our faith and our family and having fun and we've really simplified that message into just making memories now it, it doesn't have to be this huge commitment or expensive excursion just go make a memory with somebody that you love grab whoever is near and go do something really cool and um, and that's what we're about is this your first time on Zion White Bison? Or? It's our second time in Zion. Second time in Zion. Uh, Zion. It's not Zion. It's, people said, oh, we I know you're Zion. not. Well, they said, we know you're not from here because you say Zion. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, it's our second time in Zion. We came in 2019. And we did get to do a couple of really cool things. We did the Narrows, which, yeah. you know, going through the river. And then we did do Angel's Landing. Although Sarah and I only went to a certain point and the boys finished it. Um, I loved Zion. It was one of my favorite national parks in all of the years that we've been out. Just because of those hikes, they're so unique. But we have been so surprised at how built up the area is. White Bison wasn't here when we came before. And this is a cool, cool campground. <laughs> and we're gonna give everybody a full tour of it before we leave. I don't think I don't think it even qualifies as a campground. No, it's an RV it's a, resort. It's a destination. It is, it is yeah, truly it is an, an RV, RV resort. resort. And, yeah. You know, we're, we have the privilege of being here as it's being finalized. You know, they, they obviously there's infrastructure here and things like that. This place, when it's done, is going to be lights out. One of the top RV parks in the country, and especially this close to a major national park. Have you guys been to the Overlook inside? We have not been to the Overlook. What if, why don't we go there today? Would you guys be up to going on a yes. hike? It's about a mile sure. and then the view is stunning. It's absolutely. One of our goals in being here was to explore some different parts of the park that we didn't do last time. Um, so that would be that yeah, would be and, super get, cool. and getting to make new friends, and some, sometimes we have people that we know. We're all about what you're, where you want to take us. So the answer is yes. Yes. Yes, yes for mom. Yes. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. One thousand percent yes. Okay, so if they're all yeses. How come our shoes aren't on? Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>Canyon Overlook. Sounds like everyone is ready to go. Guys, I'm excited for you guys to see the view as well. Who wants to lead the way? I will. No, no, I will. I'll follow behind. Excited. They've never been here before, so I can't wait to capture their reactions. Um, this is a super, super spectacular. It's got an amazing view at the end. This park has so many places to be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Like there, there are so many just off places as you as you go on all these trails. You mean places that you just yeah, that you can just yeah. slip, fall off if you're not paying attention. This is definitely a. Uh, Make sure you're paying attention to the
backwards. You can get that faster. Right, Trey? Oh, <laughs> see? <laughs> It looks like a little uh, racetrack, you know, in like Super Mario Kart or something. Like a little matchbox or yeah. yeah, like a video game. It's freaking stunning. It's so beautiful. It is. It's the high spots or not, was it? No. It was a great high. This is yeah. a. This is. Yeah. Would you recommend it to uh, others? Anybody can do this one. This is great. Yeah, this is this is well worth it. And it feels like a real hike too. Like if you've never done anything like this, you get the elevation, you've got that little bit of danger. It's a good start, huh? And the views are amazing everywhere. <laughs> Not just here, all along the way. All right, guys, what an amazing day it has been hanging out with the Shin Paws. Thank you guys so much for coming along with us on this adventure, letting us, Zion Made, hang out with you guys. If you guys haven't noticed yet, they have an amazing YouTube channel. A lot of crazy things has happened to them. Here's the link right here. Check out their YouTube channel. Go give them some love. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. It has been our pleasure, and you guys are amazing. We had a great time. Thanks for sharing Zion with us. Well, guys, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next video. That is Zion Made with the Shin Paws. That's a wrap.